How's it doing? How are you going? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you software from a company that you have probably used software from, but you may have not heard of, Zplane. This is because Zplane licenses their SDKs and algorithms to just about every major DAW and even some consumer audio companies. For example, Ableton, Dolby, Native Instruments, Steinberg, Cubase, Akai, Avid, Beatport, Bitwig, Reaper, FL Studio, SoundCloud, Gibson, Korg, Microsoft, Sony, Spotify, to name a couple. So it would be safe to assume that most of their money comes from licensing, and that would probably also explain why their plugins are relatively inexpensive and undermarketed until now. And what I mean by that is that I'm going to help market it with this video, not raise the price of the plugins. So first up, and in my opinion, the most impressive of the bunch is Retune. To put it simply, Retune is an effects plugin, and if you feed the effects plugin music in the key of C major, and you wanna make it C minor, or whatever you choose, Retune does that. Or maybe when listening to some acoustic guitar that you just recorded, you realize that your B string is out of tune a bit. Retune can fix that, or so they claim. It's like live auto-tune for every note that you or your band is playing in real time. That's a huge promise, especially for something under 200 hours. Let's find out how well it works and how good it sounds. I have a Fender Acoustasonic here, and I believe that it is a bit flat. Yeah. Yuck. I kind of want to test the limits of Retune, so I guess I'll just play an A minor. I'll play some chords and then maybe some fingerings, and we'll see how that sounds. Okay, here's the Retune plugin, and I know that I played this in A minor, however, Retune doesn't, but it claims to be able to figure it out, so let's see if it can. That was fast and effective. Okay, so we have it set to A minor and we are just going to pitch correct it. If we want to, we could detune specific strings. I could hear a little bit of the pitch stretchiness, so I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of reverb on here to see if that clears it up at all. I'm impressed. I'm gonna get a little bit more creative with my chord in the background here and see if I could make it match to something a lot more mysterious sounding than just a simple A minor or A major. Wow. Let's go back to the original super crappy thing that I recorded. <laughs> it seems that if I turn down the transients and the smoothing and turn up the sensitivity a bit, I get the optimum quality from the algorithm. You can hardly tell anything's being done to it. Okay, so getting even crazier, if I have my output port to, let's say three, for example, and then set the input port of the effects plugin to three, every DAW has a different way of managing this. I can now play a MIDI keyboard down here in which I can kind of just tell it what I want in real time. So let's go with E major. Okay, so what we just did is kind of an unfair abuse of this plugin. <laughs> While it turned out a lot better than I expected, it still isn't something that you would traditionally do with this. You would more likely just tune your guitar first. But accidents do happen, and let's role play for a bit. Let's say that we are the engineer at a studio and there's a guitar, maybe a double bass, a piano, a drum set, a singer, and we're just playing a E major seven on the guitar, and the guitar just, one of the strings just goes out of tune. Let's say the G string falls flat by about 20%. A goes sharp by maybe 15%. 
That actually hurt me a little bit. All right, moment of truth. And so if we wanted to be a little bit more surgical about it, rather than just hitting pitch correct, we could go back to the guitar and say, okay, what's out of tune? All right, so the A is a little sharp, and that was up playing the root D. So we would want that to go down a few cents. Yeah, so we could dial that in pretty much perfectly. Okay, I have an idea. I'm going to play a little guitar solo in nothing but a single whole tone scale, which if you know what that means, it means that it's going to be really hard to sound good with any chord under it because whole tone is kind of the dissonant scale. Then I'm going to make an entirely different backing track with its own melody, and we're gonna see if Retune can save it and actually make it sound like a reasonably good guitar solo over that song that hasn't been written yet. I would normally just use a drum loop for something like this, but it seems like anytime I use a drum loop on one of my streams, I get copyright striked by somebody claiming to own it. So we'll just use addictive drums with a preset MIDI file. That is way harder and weirder than I expected it to be. <laughs> Get ready for what may be the lamest song or backing track I've ever written in my life. Not that you need reminding, but this comes from... Next up we have Peel. Peel displays audio in an interesting way visually and then allows you to select part of that image and send that to another channel in your session. So for example, if you were recording a singer and you wanted to EQ a specific tonal or note range, or if you had a complete song and wanted to add reverb to only the snare drum, Peel claims to not only be able to make this possible, but to make it simple, all for under 50 bucks. Let's see if that's the case. So this works with literally any audio that you put in it, but I'm putting drums into it just because I suppose that that's the most transparent way of showing you how it works. So you can see in a pretty interesting graph here where all of the sounds are, and then you can highlight them. So I want that snare. Maybe a little bit lower, yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna click that drum loop and I'm gonna right click the next channel and I'm going to side chain to this track. And then in here, I am going to go to processing and output it right over there. So now it should be in both sides here. Peel send, we'll be hearing only that piece of the spectrum that I selected. And so maybe a real simple and logical way of using this would be to just put some reverb on that portion of that snare. And so again, we don't have stems, we just have that one drum loop and we can isolate different parts. So that's a good way of just demonstrating its simple use. But if I want to, for example, change my drum loop channel to channel one, then I would be side chaining or sending that route over to, and then I'm gonna disable the loop clone track. So now this way we can extrapolate things even better and we're not missing that part of the spectrum and we can just add this as only something that's affected. So for example, if we wanted to be even more precise, we could add a simple gate here.
Only the loudest snares will get through. So we have the gate only letting the loudest snares in. We have Vocodex adding a saw wave with a nice juicy chord on it. Then we have a little bit of phaser. Then we have a ping pong delay. Then we have a shimmer. Let's hear it. <laughs> It's so funny because if I didn't look at the perimeters here, I would have never known this. I think this is automatable. Let's find out. Look, no hands. The word look just triggers this dog. Wow, that's actually really useful and also makes me think of a bunch of odd applications that this could be used for. This next one is called elastic pitch, or maybe it's called elastic pitch. Frankly, I was not all that excited to check out a pitch and format shifter because I already have about a hundred of them and they typically sound like hot garbage. But I'm glad that I took the time to explore this one because it has outstanding functionality and quality and it honestly made me a bit more open to pitch shifters in general. This one is really, really good. All this time, now I realize it's just a game to you. That's actually two semitones down. There we go. That's the that's the actual sample. All this time. Obviously, if we drag it down or up an entire octave, it's not going to sound natural, but it is likely going to sound better than most of the pitch shifting algorithms that we're accustomed to. We could also unlink the pitch and timbre down here. And down here we have voicing, which you would want to adjust if you have a voice that is very high or very bassy. And so you could set where you want the timbre and pitch to meet, and then relink it, and then it just stays on that line. And we could either type in zero and enter into these boxes, or just double click this to return to center. Everything you see here is automatable, and also you can hook up a MIDI controller to control the pitch. All this time, now I all I you can also freeze the pitch. All this time. Kind of unexpected, but there's also a pitch delay feature here. All this time, this time, now I all I these always have interesting effects if you set them to a third, a fifth, or a seventh. After all this That's so odd. <laughs> Well, that was a fun side quest. <laughs> See if that'll actually fit into a loop, that would be nice. And if we just bump this up, I don't know, three semitones on the voice. I'm trying to figure out that if you put a little bit more reverb on that, if it would be indistinguishable from a pitch corrected sample. One thing that's worth mentioning is that if you're a producer and you have a vocal that you want to sound more powerful without harmonizing and it's already recorded, like if this went into a really explosive chorus or something, there's something you could do where you could bring a slight octave down in and it actually it works. But you do have to play around with it quite a bit to sound natural. If you make it a little bit more subtle, and if you do play around with the timbre and the voicing, it actually works. 
all this time Now I realize it's just a game to you I don't want to play no more. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because ideally what you would actually want to do is have this in a separate channel so you could EQ that separate from the vocal itself so that we could take off some of the high end and craft it a little bit further. So I've automated this to come in on the third bar and it's extremely subtle but it's usually pretty effective. Oh, You know, we could also just pitch correct this entire thing and then bring the dry and wet down on retune to give this a bit of a chorus effect. I'm going to go out on a limb and doubt that Z-Plane intended this to be the use, but if we turn pitch correct off and then I think this is A, right? Uh, yeah. And if we detuned A by, I don't know, 34 cents then the only thing that would have a chorus effect would be the A note, whether it was an instrument or a singer. This is That's pretty powerful. Another subtle but really effective thing you could do, I transposed this up by three semitones, locked it into C major, it's pitch corrected, and now we have a subtle harmonization. Speaking of voice harmonization, als nächstes auf der Liste, Fehlklang. Fehlklang is a German phrase that describes a scenario where somebody is asking you what the name of a movie is that has Matt Damon in it, and you know the name of that, but you're pretending to forget the name of that because you don't like them and you don't want to help them remember the name. It also means polyphony. Fielklang has been around for a long time. Dare I say it was the first smart harmonizer plugging around. I don't actually know if that's the case, but I would bet money on it. I think that today most people would compare it to Melodyne due to its interface, but while it can accomplish some of the same things Melodyne does, it really is originally built as a tool to add vocal harmonization. Also, I think that comparing the two in a competitive way might not be the best way of approaching it, especially if you are a professional in the world of music production. Pitch correction has become a standard for music production, and sometimes Melodyne or Antares algorithms don't work with specific recordings. I think having more individual algorithms to compare to each recording is best as long as it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Field Clang is under $200, so I would not call that an arm and a leg. That's just like a pinky finger or a tip of a pinky finger. Let's play with it. Now, the last time that I opened this plugin, the UI looked like it was something out of 1999, and now they have made it a lot more modern and easy to use, and that's a really good thing. There are some things that I wish they would just fix. For example, I'm in a 48K session. If I load a 44.1K WAV file, it's going to ask me if I want to load it at a different sample rate, meaning that it's going to be at a different pitch. Most modern audio tools would have the conversion and the playback, or they would do it when loading the file. This may or may not be that big of a deal to you. When mentioning these setbacks, I do have to be fair, because the average producer would probably compare this plugin to something like Melodyne 5 Assistant, which costs about $300, and this costs, I think, about a third of that. So I'm going to load a 48K voice sample made by yours truly. And it is in C major, not G major. It's the first time it made a harmonic mistake. I hate singing in my videos. I hate singing in my videos. If you've used Melodyne before, then this is similar in that you can select notes and move them around wherever you want them to go. If you double click the note, you zoom in, you get more control, such as volume, drift. Right down here, I could tune my poorly tuned voice back into scale, and I can even adjust the drift of everything, which in my opinion is way handier and easier than the Melodyne workflow. I hate singing in my 
videos I hate. Okay, so that drift down here is really bad, so let's fix that. I also don't like in the beginning how it goes, hey, I hate singing. Yeah. I hate singing. Nice. All right, so the magic here is I click harmonize and voila, we have three voiced intelligent harmonization. I hate singing in my videos. I hate singing. So just like that, Z-Plane does what it does best by detecting the chord and scale that you're playing it in, and then it locks your harmonization in there automatically without you really having to do anything other than press the big harmonize button up on top. And then for each one of these voices, you could edit the tuning, the drift, the timing, and the shape. The shape, for example, would be like way up here, this mosquito voice. I hate singing. Just basically the format. And then if we tune everything to 100%, it'll sound a bit more vocody and robotic, I would assume. And then I think we can just change the scales like we could with the other plugins, which is always a lot of fun. I hate singing in my videos. If we don't take every damn thing to 100 and just use two voices, my main voice, and then one added on through the intelligent harmonization, and maybe not super tune it, and maybe leave the timing off by a little bit, and then mix it somewhere just right over here. I bet that it would sound like a real voice and not like a robot. Let's hear it. I hate singing yep. in my videos parallel mode I hate singing in my videos and then we could also choose midi input in which we can just go back to that midi port 3 and try it out I hate singing in my videos so you could edit all of the harmonization and <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> and if you like it, then you can save snapshots here, and then you can also trigger the snapshots with MIDI keys by enabling this little snapshot mode. baseball. Oh, hey, uh, what's next? Tonic. Tonic is a very simple concept that requires a lot of complicated deep warning under the hood. You run audio through it and it tells you what root note or chord is playing. That's pretty simple and it does it pretty accurately. If you are a sample or loop-based musician who doesn't have a very well-trained ear, this is a must-buy for under $50. It's literally a giant sign telling you what bass note or chord will work with whatever you're working on. That's really powerful, but I kind of enjoyed misusing the algorithm's lower confidence results to suggest some ideas for reharmonization. Let's throw it in F major. There you go. By the way, in the settings here, you could resize this to be large or small in case you wanted to use it for a performance or something, or if you just wanted to have it a tiny little thing in the corner of your DAW. And so the last thing I played was an F sharp major. You could also have that be a G flat major in the settings. And then these circles around here tell you the confidence rating. So it was this confident that it was an F-sharp major. However, it was this confident that it was an F-sharp minor and this tiny little bit of confidence that it was a D-sharp minor. Down here, we just have little keys with the synthesizer, or we could play chords from that as well. Or we could fold them and then we have everything in the scale or chord that is in front of us. Basically, this just helps you dial in 
what key you're playing in as quickly as possible. I'm gonna try a little experiment and just play stuff in like C minor seven. So I'm gonna press play here and the piano that I just recorded is going to be going into tonic, which will then interpret it and show me some chords. And then I'm gonna play some of those chords on this electric piano here. And I don't think I'm necessarily going to play the one that's on top. I'm just going to play the selections, I don't know, just as an experiment. Ooh. C sharp major. That actually turned out how I expected it to. The algorithm is not perfect, but some of the other chords that it selected would actually be very interesting alternative directions for a song to go. So that's pretty cool. Finally, last but not least, we have Dakota. Dakota is a standalone application that helps you analyze and learn existing songs a whole lot faster. It costs about 50 bucks, and I really wish it existed when I was a teenager swearing at guitar tablature, but I suppose that I simply cannot think of a better way to test it out than me playing an instrument in real time over music that I've literally never heard before. So I'm gonna role play a bit and pretend that I have a gig at a cocktail lounge tonight and I just got the song list and I don't recognize one of those songs and I need to learn it real fast so I'm gonna use YouTube's uh, license free audio library to find a random song to do this with so I don't get a copyright strike. Just search cocktail and jazz cocktail hour by Aaron Kenny. Perfect. All right, I got my trusty fretless acoustic bass here. Let's take it from the top Aaron. Hopefully that G is a lead in. Yes. Dakota worked flawlessly for what it claims to do. All right, I got a bass solo with Peacefully by Ease Jammy Jams. This works fine. I have a screen resolution that is not that friendly with YouTube, and I do zoom in a bit so you could see what's going on a little bit better, otherwise it would be a little chaotic. And over here, you may be missing this in part of this Dakota overview, but we have this menu. This is help, this is maximize, this is a sub-menu for exporting the project, audio or MIDI, or just the chord chart. Then you have your volume here, you have a little mixer section here, you have a plug-in slash effects section. This is the waveform view, this is the individual note view. And then down here we have the BPM controls and then we could also set the speed to normal speed, three quarters, half speed, or quarter speed. So you drag and drop a song, it learns it that quickly, almost instantly. And then you have your different parts of a song that it decides. I'm maybe by the timbre, or I'm not really sure how it decides what your parts are. And now if you want, it will also play chords along with the song. It'll play the chords from the song itself. That way you could tell how off or on it is. It's not like this song's very complicated or anything, but if you wanted to learn it at half speed, or even a quarter speed, it uses Z-Plane's time-stretching algorithms to slow it down. I like this better than my original. Let's throw in a really harmonically complex piece. This is from my Seven Quarantine Poems piano album.
Wow. I threw this song in here out of my own amusement, kind of expecting Dakota to take a crap because the it's just harmonically all over the place. And it actually didn't do a bad job. And again, I guess if you wanted to learn this key by key, you could just go into this mode. And so any of the MIDI notes you draw in, you could export that as a MIDI file, or you can just export all of the MIDI chords as a MIDI file. Just naturally, it just does that. Or you could also export a lead sheet, which you could do with Chord Pro or plain text which I think is kind of funny because it does this. It reminds me of those NFO files that you get when you pirate software. Not that I would ever do such a thing. If you want, you could also select an input here, load in plugins, have presets for that entire thing. I'm sure I'm missing something, but this is the overall gist of what Dakota is, and I'm pretty impressed. To be totally honest with you, I think I underestimated every single one of these plugins or programs, not only previous to making this video, but while making it. There's so many AI magic and chord helper plugins these days that I just assume that they're all 90% marketing and 10% functionality. But to my surprise, Z-Plane seems to be the opposite ratio, hence why I'm telling you about it. And hey, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and click that little bell down there if you want to get a notification when I have a new upload. I have a stream typically every Thursday evening, Eastern time. You should definitely come check that out as well. And if there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. And of course, if you want access to unreleased music, audio assets, ambisonic field recordings, and an amazing community with monthly songwriting challenges and game servers, my Patreon is for you, and you can sign up for as little as $1. All right, bye.